Good afternoon and welcome to NTCA's eShowcase webcast series. This afternoon, optimizing your central office with a foundation for the future. Our sponsor this afternoon is Redcom. Joining us from Redcom are Carlos Sanchez. He is Vice President of Sales Americas for Redcom. In that role, Carlos is responsible for Redcom's commercial sales in the Americas as well as sales support in marketing. Also, Todd Kimball is Regional Sales Manager at Redcom. His sales territory includes the Western and Midwestern United States as well as the state of Alaska. Please join me in welcoming Todd and Carlos. Thank you for having us in, in this webcast. Uh, just myself, as, I was, as the introduction went through, just uh, I'm the Vice President of Sales here for the Americas, and so with marketing, and Todd Kimball is our Regional Sales Manager at Redcom. Just, just came back from IP possibility. Welcome to everybody, and thank you for um, taking time out of your day to visit with us today. All right, the agenda for today, uh, we're gonna go uh, through the company introduction, and uh, we go also to the state central office market. Uh, we're going to uh, have an introduction about Transit, the Foundation for the Future, the uh, HDX Carrier Class 4.5 soft switch in the Excise 2100. We go to a summary and then to a Q&A session. So let's talk, talk about Redcon for just for a minute. Uh, Redcon was incorporated in 1978. We've been in business for over 30 years. Uh, we got a, a facility with 140,000 square foot facility here in Victor, New York. Uh, the South State, New York, uh, we're close to, uh, very close to Lake Ontario, uh, just outside Rochester. Uh, we manufacture, we engineer uh, everything. I mean, all of our products, I mean, from software, uh, to uh, circuit, circuit boards, to the assembly, all in, inside this building here in Victor, New York. We got a very rigid quality control program, and uh, we are independent of a private owned company. <coughs> and we are, we are well known by our reliability. In, uh, for, for 30 years, over 30 years, we've been proving that over and over again uh, because uh, our system just works. Our customer service is 24/7, uh, and our training facility is here in the U.S. And we got a lot of happy customers uh, worldwide. Our philosophy: uh, we don't charge for maintenance agreements. Uh, we don't have a mandatory uh, program per se. Uh, we don't have a, a scheduled maintenance in uh, obsolescent programs. So uh, we we support. All of our products, 100%, since the since the incorporation is since 1978. We also cover a variety of, of markets, uh, from central office, oil and gas, power line carriers, government and defense, maritime, and emergency response. This, this uh, the reliability goes for all these markets. It's the same quality control for all the products that goes to each of these markets. So we, uh, we, uh, that's our number one philosophy, quality. We also, I mean, uh, we design, and we, our quality control is so stringent that we uh, try to make sure that everything that goes to uh, our uh, customers are proven and tested prior to shipment. We got installations in every point of the globe. I mean, from remote areas, often uh, northern territories of Canada, Alaska, uh, in, the, in, in South America, in the South Pacific, throughout the uh, Middle East, and also in, in the Southeast and Pacific Rim. But let's talk about the central office uh, environment today. Most of the ILEX uh, today, I mean, that it relies on uh, on the uh, PD and network for the revenue stream, and that's that's that we have to today. The uh, challenge is to uh, in, is how to migrate to to VOIP, and the uh, IP basically offers a potential for 
operating expenditure, operating expenditure savings. But, uh, but the thing is, TDM is still here. And it will continue, that's the reality. It will continue to be here for years to come. Uh, of course, the economic downturn has caused that the, uh, the life cycle of, of this uh, TDM uh, uh, systems and, and networks have to be uh, basically um, reassessed, and, and we got to look into the investment done for that infrastructure. So that's something to consider to keep in mind when you migrate into the future. And the other reality is that because of technology changes, you got to have a strategy to, to migrate to IP. And uh, that means that you got to, there's one thing that, that's, that's a reality too, I mean, the, the ILEC sell services that make money. And, and you got to keep your expenditures low in order to make money. But at the same time, you got you got another variable to consider that your voice revenues are being eroded and you're looking for, for new source of revenues. So how to transition to IP? Let's consider some key factors uh, when migrating to IP. First, you've got to think about low risk. Uh, you've got to be flexible enough in, in looking for a cost-effective transition. Um, it, the other thing is you don't know is the market, the VOIP market. How is that going to behave right now or in the future? So you can start, uh, let's say, with a, less than 100 of, uh, subscribers to test the market. And but at the same time, you got to be able to use your infrastructure. You, you already invest a lot of money and resources into your TDN network, and that's right now in, in your place. So the challenge is how can I migrate to IP and use my my assets, and also how can I retain the legacy equipment, and at the same time, all those maintenance agreements that you're paying right now with those legacy systems, and, and how can I use that to migrate to IP? So just the things to consider when when, my, when when you're building that strategy. So one question that comes to mind is, okay, what type of soft switch will be ideal to migrate uh, to IP. So as I said before, you've got a TDM network already in place. So the first thing that comes to mind is you've got a hybrid, you have to have a hybrid system, meaning TDM and IP ready to in a single platform. So you can connect to your existing network and, and build that bridge for the future for your VOIP network. Uh, also got to be Interoperable, I mean, meaning you got to follow the SIP standards. Uh, you got to have, have some SIP compression to, to be able to, to use the, the, the SIP trunking capability, and also connect to your SS7. Uh, that's that's a fact. At the same time, it's okay. I need I, I need to minimize the number of boxes inside that network. So, looking for an ideal box that will have your call manager and your media gateway controller inside the same box. You gotta have all the feature rich requirements and at the same time think about having a distributed architecture that will minimize putting all the ass in one basket. So not putting everything at one single node. And also be ready for the future. And meaning that you've got to comply with future requirements for for example for like IPv six. So what is complete TDM and that in VOIP interoperability? That that's what we call transit. Uh, basically, transit is, is is a technology suite that's a, a SIP based, meaning they follow the SIP standards. It fully integrates the call management and the media gateway. Includes all the features from from TDM and IP in a single platform. You got IPv4, IPv6 your IP management uh, truck control, codex, more and more IP, and fax over IP. The, the, so that's what transit is, brings to the table. So let's go to an example. Let's say you got just right now an existing legacy switch connected to your PSDN and your analog subscribers. So you want to 
first is, okay, here's my connectivity to TSDN, and the first question is, how can I reuse this platform that I got? Is, so the next stage is, okay, to maintain your existing uh, legacy switch, you can, for example, install a Vacuum HDX or a Slide 2100. We're going to go more in, in details later on. That is totally a hybrid system that connects TDM and IP. You can start adding your uh, new subscribers via zip trunking. You can add a zip trunk to your PSTN, and also just a legacy uh, trunk like a T1 to your existing switch, and adding to new remotes. Next phase, once you're, everything is up and running, and you don't need that legacy switch anymore, you can start thinking about replacing or getting uh, rid of the old legacy switch. You don't have to keep paying uh, those maintenance agreements for the old legacy switch, and now you can uh, basically satisfy both needs, the new subscribers on the IP network and the existing subscribers on the TDN network, plus you're still being connected to the PSDN. And the ultimate goal is once you get, for example, fiber to the home and, and, and you upgrade your outside plant with uh, new facilities, you created, and you created your next generation IP backbone, you can have a, full, a platform like the Redcom system, truly interoperable with all the new gear, uh, broadband load carriers, and you can open uh, new facilities with uh, with the Slide 2100 or new remotes, and you got basically the best of both technologies in a single platform solution. So let's go over. Oh, and by the way, some other priorities and returns to consider when when analyzing this migration path is you got to take into account the initial costs, the recurring expenses the vendor, and the technology. So everything got to be orchestrated and not just uh, based your decision on just uh, price or just technology or just, just expenses. You got to think, you got to be think global in, into this thing. Think about all the different financial factors and technology factors that will Make uh, what will help you to make the decision or the right decision to migrate to IP. So let's go to the uh, Redcom transit. That's your foundation for the future. More in detail. So as I said before, what's transit? What's the technology suite? Here we got a transit is basically a full integrated TDM and VOIP technology suite. It includes the code manager, the media gateway, media gateway controller, dual stack, IPv4, IPv6, already in all the TDM and IP interoperability already built in. So in, it follows the SEED standards. So it's not just a proprietary, it's totally standard, meaning that you can, uh, as long as the and devices like a, an IP phone follows the SIP standards is, is interoperable with our system. If, if you can support up to 1,000 IP subscribers per shelf, you got different uh, ta uh, tagging, VLAN tagging uh, features, you got uh, bandwidth management for trunking control, and also a selection of codecs, and your IP call records, fax over IP, and modem over IP. So let's go through the uh, the HDX uh, a little bit more in detail. It's more than a soft switch. For example, if you need to migrate to IP, uh, you're going to need at least seven boxes. You need a uh, a media gateway, a media gateway controller, signal gateway, ATA, uh, conference server, 
and at the end of the day, you got seven boxes to maintain, and for perhaps seven different maintenance agreements to 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 keep in mind. With our system, you got everything in a single platform, so you can support both the TDM and the IP networks, and the call management and the, and the gateway, and even a radio line interface for those who get have to connect to emergency responders and treating the radio subscribers as telephone subscribers. So the HDX brings your call manager, media gateway, media gateway controller, your IP subscribers, uh, all your trunking, either T1s or E1s for those that need uh, international trunking, and box and modem over IP, and all the TDM facilities. We base our HDX architecture based on the what we call the modular switching unit, the MSU. So this allows you to distribute uh, your switching system throughout the network. You don't have to have everything in a single point. Uh, so that means the more distribution you get in your network, the more survivability you can have in your, in your network, increasing uh, the reliability, actually, for, for, those, for that type of network design. In talking about reliability, we got system already operating you know, in, in stream environments. Uh, and it's been proven for, for the last 32 years in, in all the environments, global, I mean globally. And we have passed the uh, one of the most rigid tests uh, for the uh, defense market when we have proven the finite reliability over and over again. It's stackable. I mean, we can stack up to 32 shelves, uh, and that means you can. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you have to have 32 shelves of one single note. You can have 32 shelves in different notes and treat the whole thing as a one system. For signaling, uh, we go from SS7, uh, R1s, R2s, uh, then GR303, B5.2, radio line interfacing, and IP lines and trunks. Almost all the business features uh, for attendant operator councils, uh, group bringing, private networking, group hunting. So those are available right in the HDX. And also additional capabilities like uh, fast features, FXX, FXO, FXX, Kalia, uh, uh, LMP, uh, internet interface, and enhanced Centrex features. Conferencing, this is so powerful in our systems. You have, you can have multiple uh, parties called it uh, TDM subscribers, IP subscribers, radio subscribers, all the same conference. And you can provide the multiple levels. And multi you can customize every type of conferencing based on the number of subscribers and the type of subscribers you have. Uh, for IP management, uh, the, you can control your trunk groups based on the type of codex or priorities in your network, uh, type of customers, and this allows you to, to manage your bandwidth in your network. Let's talk about the slice 2100. We call it the slice because we slice the, the HDX. Uh, so what you see in the picture right now is a one U size, it's not a blade. It's a, it's a full-blown class four, class five soft switch. So what is included in, on the 2100? We got a full feature call manager, IPv4, IPv6 ready, up to 1,000 IP subscribers being supported for this, uh, on this single unit. We got SS7, 0303, media gateway, all supported by this system. system. It's one use high, it's only 16 pounds, 2.3 amps of consumption. Uh, it's transportable, you can, uh, and, the, and you have the TDM and IP facilities already built in. And 
if you, if you remember the, pre, the prior, the prior uh, diagram, you can stack two systems in a single node in support. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of services out of the site 2100 on your next generation uh, network. So uh, that that is the power of the interoperability in a in a slice 2100 system. Same as as the HDS, we can support up to 1,000 IP subscribers per slice, uh, and also includes your call manager, media gateway, and media gateway controller in the same box. The from view. Uh, you got the PCMCIA slots for backup, uh, serial ports, uh, power switch, your ET1 ports, and Ethernet ports right on front. So it's nothing to to configure. Everything is right there on, on, in the front of the, of the uh, Slice 2100. The rear view, you can customize this based on your specific network requirements. You can have just align modules, you can have trunk modules. If you want, you can increase this with uh, adding more T1, for example, and we can allow up to six for slice 2100. Same signaling controls as we got on the HDX, like say we follow the same standards, R1, R2, ISDN, that's the seven. You can support uh, multiple, uh, to selectable T1 beta software, you can stack via the uh, size interest interlinks, and also 24 analog lines and four ISDN BRIs. Uh, more trunking capabilities is available, like uh, ENM trunks, uh, uh, bound and loop start bring down trunks, and four additional T1s available if required. And once you stack to 2100, you can support up to 2,000 IP subscribers per node. And this is our, uh, an example of a multi-site intelligent or hybrid system where you can have multiple sites but with different requirements and you can support your customers out there with, uh, call it uh, uh, IP subscribers, TDM subscribers, radio subscribers, and with, you can add a 2100 on the main site and, and 2100s on different sites, and, and then you can have your full blown hybrid system uh, in, in your own network. So, in summary, uh, Transition to IP on your own schedule, meaning you you gotta have your you gotta assess your strategy with low risk, looking for flexibility, a cost effective transition to to VOIP. You can test the market with as low as let's say 100 IP subscribers. You can maximize your uh, your the use of your TDM network, your assets and your investment. You can retain your legacy equipment. And get uh, the best for both TDM and VRP technologies in a single platform. So thank you very much for your opportunity, and, uh, and we open for any questions and and concerns. Thank you.
So for any questions, uh, we, people can, uh, you can type on the Q&A tab on the top, and we can answer any questions via the, uh, the Q&A feature. There are two questions. Uh, the first, first one actually is a comment and a question. Nice job, Carlos. When buying a soft switch, you need to take into consideration all associated maintenance and software upgrade costs. One of the ways Redcom has differentiated itself from, from its competitors is that your company doesn't have mandatory service contracts or software upgrades. With Redcom soft switch, how much can a service provider save compared to competitors over time? Well, the, the, the answer to that question is basically uh, we don't charge for maintenance agreements uh, or we don't mandate uh, maintenance agreements at all. So we support our equipment and for life. Which means that there's no obsolescence of the equipment and you can keep running your equipment for years without having to um, be A and M'd into a position where you have to replace your equipment? The next question is, would this product slice compared to Aztec and Jenna brand for ESA solution? Well, I know the Aztec product, uh, but uh, the comparison is this, this is a class four, class five soft switch, while the Aztec is not. Uh, you, you need for the Aztec, you need some outside resources to, you know, for, example, for example, for GR303. Uh, the Slice 2100 supports GR303 already, including VOIP. Okay, and then the last question, how many switches have been deployed by Redcom in the U.S.? Well, oh, yeah, go ahead. I'll steal that. Um, we have over, um, I would say, 50... Well, actually, over 75 to 100 switches just in Alaska alone. And then we have a smattering of um, other uh, states throughout, throughout the whole United States that have um, switches. Um, Colorado, um, Illinois, Michigan, uh, again, uh, through California, through, uh, California, yeah. through a lot of, throughout yeah. a lot of the United States. So if I had to say, to make a guess, we, we'd probably be in the like four to five hundred range. Okay, I think that's all. Thank okay, you. well, thank you very much. All right, thanks everyone. That uh, that does conclude our our webcast, and we hope you'll join us again uh, for the next one. Please watch your email, and uh, the announcement will be to you very shortly. Thanks very much.